views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to Radically Distinct Radio with Jen Morgan. Radically Distinct Radio bridges the worlds of brand marketing and professional development to help you take control of your future and build your brand to accomplish your goals. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself to launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Radically Distinct Radio provides insights for how to show up in the world as your most powerful brand. As a brand strategist, advertising producer, and business coach, Jen Morgan has 15 years experience helping individuals, teams, and companies create stories that inspire action. Her RAD method empowers people to be radically distinct by giving them a framework for perceiving their brand and expressing their value that sets them in a class of their own. Now, she brings the RAD method to the airwaves to help you maximize your brand power to produce results. Here's your host, Jen Morgan. Hello. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning us in and turning us on. Jen Morgan and me, I'm Dr. Pat, Radically Distinct Radio. Jen, it's so great to be connecting with you again. Yeah, it's so great to be on the air with you again, Dr. Pat. It's very fun and exciting. And I'm in the studio today, which makes me feel so official. <laughs> oh, and I'm in a studio of a different time, but I, a different kind, but I don't feel as official. Um, <laughs> what I love about this is that each, each of us gets to take our own journey, right? We get to go on this course and this course of action. And part of it has to do with what we do on the way. So in your case, the journey from unknown to known. Um, let's start for a minute, if we could, a little bit differently. Okay. I think we should kind of talk about what you're doing in the world, how you're helping people become the best version of themselves, and what is it that's led up to us talking today about marketing design, the journey from unknown to known. With Jen Morgan and Radically Distinct. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm on a mission, and this has been my professional vision, I guess, for the last maybe 12 years, to defend the universe from mediocre marketing. It's kind of been my <laughs> guiding theme. And that's changed over time, and it's now become the mission of Radically Distinct, which is a creative marketing agency which now has a f- actually has a website, and it has more of a, a presence. For a long time, it was just the how I'd put you know, all my invoices under Radically Distinct. And now it's starting to have a team surrounding around it and a syndicate that helps us manage marketing for professional service firms. So I, I, you know, I come from production, producing marketing. That's where I started out. And I've been able to emerge from an absolutely unknown person in multiple different markets, Detroit, Seattle, Um, and California and Boston, and I've done that all through what we call marketing design. Mm. You know, let's start with what you're talking about marketing design, but I want to go back from what you said originally because I think this is so important to talk about, this idea of mediocre marketing. And, you know, part of this is people, Jen, don't even know that that's what they're doing. It's true. It's very true. Mm -hmm. I mean... Medio- so for me, mediocre marketing is a huge statement of marketing for marketing's sake. Um, but it's also, you know, you go to your mailbox and it's just full of junk. <laughs> and <laughs> you have to throw that away every day. And instead of me being excited that I got a bunch of coupons from your store, I'm annoyed that I constantly have to empty my mailbox with crap that you sent me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so that's, that's basically what mediocre marketing, instead of attracting people to your cause, what it does is repel them <laughs> from you because you're annoying them. You're taking up their time. You're not something that they want and or to hear or easy to understand and for them to make a decision. Instead, you're a nuisance. That's mediocre marketing. And, 
it's true that I feel people don't really understand that they're doing that because mm-hmm. there's general, you know, maybe mar- marketing is not everybody's core competency. So that's one thing. But also there's so many different marketing tactics that you could do. It's easy to fall into the latest, you know, the latest new technology and mm-hmm. kind of lose track of the purpose of marketing. Yeah. And can we talk about that for a minute? It's like the old idea of we don't even know what we don't know. But basically marketing design, the journey from unknown to known, is about looking at how do we take our message? How do we create it? How do we bring it out? And in your words, defending the universe from mediocre mediocre marketing. And so let's talk about what you do focus on. Okay. So markets change. You know, life, world around us changes all the time. And in business, one thing always stays the same, and that's the most powerful brand wins. And marketing design is a managed approach to creating that brand power. Studies are showing that the fastest growing professional service firms are receiving over 50% of their new business online. And that is really different than what professional services, and when I'm saying professional services, I'm saying lawyers, attorneys, accountants. I said lawyers and attorneys are the same thing, but you don't understand. Right. <laughs> that people who provide services, what they sell is themselves and their expertise. So we're used to getting business through referrals. That's been the number one way in which we've had the ability to attract new business for years. And that way of marketing has a has an infrastructure and a way of doing business. And anytime a company might be trying to become more modernized, they run into challenges with their beliefs about what marketing is and the, how it has worked in the past. But the truth is that the fastest growing firms for the last 10 years are getting over 50% of their new business online. And if your firm is not, is not doing that, then you can be sure that your competitors are eating your lunch. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because now in the world we live in, there's nothing really that's exempt from looking at creating a powerful brand, even for our politicians. I was sharing this, a story this morning on on social media, and I don't usually, I get a gazillion of these, Jen, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't usually pay a whole lot of attention to it, but I got this thing from Camilla Harris. And I, I was really struck by her tagline. And You know, you think, well, wait a minute. Yes, of course, she's in politics. She's in California. But the tagline is what got my attention. And it was, it's fearless for the people. Fearless for the people. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. Uh, You know, am I talking about, you know, some best-selling author? Or am I talking about somebody that is becoming well-known? And her brand, if we could call it, matches who she is. How do you help people create something that matches who they are? How do you help that? Because clearly today, the Netflix we knew two or three years ago is not the Netflix of today that is winning all sorts of rewards. That's true. Well, you know, Netflix, what I find is fascinating about Netflix's story is that they always had the vision of being a streaming service Mm-hmm. But the market wasn't ready for a streaming service when they came to market. You know, they were doing DVDs for very cult classics at a time when Blockbuster was the main, you know, was the was the dominant force in the marketplace. But their vision, the reason why they're called Netflix is because they had the vision of being a streaming service from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to marketing, you really are trying to figure out first, where are you going in the next five to 10 years? It's, it's future tripping on purpose <laughs> um, because that vision is what you start to go towards uh, with your marketing as opposed to doing marketing that keeps you exactly where your business is today. So when it comes to a person who wants to be more effective, they want to get elected as a politician, where are you going to take your constituents? Where are you going because you want to create a tagline and a brand and a message that's not just about you, but is about how you provide value to a group of people that you want to rally behind your message. So that's like the big picture of what marketing design is. 
do you have a vision for the future? And if you do have a vision for the future, how do we make that relevant to the people that you need in order to get to where you're going? Yeah, you know, one of the key things I think we all really kind of struggle with from time to time is that, you know, we have a hard time, first of all, presenting the value we offer. And secondly, you know, to be able to understand it. But today, the world we live in now, business are changing. And I know you're, you know, you're going to talk about this. We now are back to saying we are in a competitive market. But what is the best way to attract and retain clients? But more importantly, companies are literally having problems even retaining employees at this point in time. Absolutely. Now, the biggest problem that marketing that many companies have, especially if you're in financial services, that's where it's getting hit oh. really hard right now. But technology is right close behind it. Um, but yeah, you're right. You 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 can't just market to clients because you can't um, you can't serve clients and or grow your business without employees to help you deliver on what you sold. So it's true that one of the biggest problems, especially professional service firms, have is. How do we create this brand and this image for our brand that attracts the top talent to come work for us so that we have a future in the marketplace? That's a, that's a big challenge, and they're calling that an employer brand. And I think that there, it's one thing to have an image that people are attracted to, and it's another thing to actually have your people engaging in your brand within your company so that people, you know, they hear about you through their friends, because that's really where your power is in today's marketing. It's through social media and what people are actually saying and talking about you and who represents your brand. Are they good ambassadors for your brand? Because all of us are out there in some way engaging in social media. Are you absent from that? <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's a way of engaging. Or you know, are you, are you completely absent from the culture of your business in terms of what you communicate, but yet the name of the company that you work for is on your Facebook and things like that? You know, So I think that when we're looking at marketing design today in a competitive marketplace, we're looking at two things. One, how do we have a unified overall idea for our brand that empowers all of our programs, including recruiting and um, client attraction? And specifically in professional services, how do we create a marketing program that gets our members out from billable hours and into the public (laughs) where they can build those relationships, whether that's in social media or in real life experiences? I think that the bigger and more busy a person becomes in a leadership role, the easier it is to shy away from marketing activities. But that's actually when you should be contributing yourself to them even more. Yeah. And, you know, when we come back, this is really cool. We're going to talk about this. When we come back, we're going to talk about like outstanding, the word outstanding, outstanding marketing results. What is the missing link? And for those of you that are tuning in, I want to just be really clear. Many times we don't believe that we have a role to play or that we are out there in the world and uh, out there marketing ourselves, our brand, but we are. This has been something that goes back decades. For those of you that are listening that have jobs inside the corporation, there's this sense now that, oh no, this conversation's for other people, not in the world we live in today. When we come back, uh, Jen is going to take us through looking at marketing strategy, outstanding marketing results, but more importantly, where the heck do you start? Jen, what's the best way for people to find out more about you? Well, you can find about me by going to my website, jenmorgan.com, but you can find out how to work with Radically Distinct by going to our new website, radicallydistinct.com. That's R-A-D-I-C-A-L-L-Y-D-I-S-T-I-N-C-T.com. Awesome. We're going to take a short break, everybody. We will be right back.
Awareness is universal. Establishing a living awareness through meditation brings peaceful, healthy, and creative well-being into your everyday life. The practice of living awareness, Spirit Fire's own meditation practice, is built on this belief and is designed for every level of practitioner. Each year, Spirit Fire hosts living awareness meditation retreats that allow you to explore the practice in depth at our retreat center in beautiful Western Massachusetts. Introduce yourself to meditation and the practice at the Foundations Retreat. Attend in silence a silent meditation retreat focused on mindfulness, presence, and nature, or be engaged with the meditation sittings themselves at the Deepening Retreat. Start adding to your awareness and attend a meditation retreat designed to cultivate consciousness in your everyday life. For details on attending a Living Awareness Meditation Retreat, visit upcoming events at www.spiritfire.com. Hey, did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new reality that is foundationless. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundationlessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible? Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Justice Welling. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Hey, everybody. Super good to have you all tune us in, turn us on. Radically Distinct Radio with Mood. With, yeah, I, listen, Jen Morgan's in the house. Be your most powerful brand. Today, marketing design, navigating the journey from unknown to known. And this is something we struggle with. Um, now we're living, Jen, in this world of outside connections. You know, before it was kind of like you really weren't like out there. You could pretty much kind of float along. People don't know who you are, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. They just didn't know. That's not the world we're living in today. And, you know, one bad post on social media can put you in a little predicament. But bad behavior on a regular basis when the economy is not good, that thing comes back to bite you right about now when things are picking up and people don't have to stay there. So you talk about strategy, marketing strategy, outstanding results, but you say it begins with thought leadership in the boardroom. Tell us what you found along the way mm -hmm. and what people should know. Well, a marketing strategy is a vision and set of parameters that aligns leaders and directs marketing. And what we find in groups, partner levels, very smart expert people, is it's very challenging to come to any, any uh, alignment or agreement on a marketing strategy. I think because it becomes very complicated, very fast. And if 
uh, you're not good at being able to, I guess, what would be the best way to describe it? Push back. Good you morning. Know? Then um, you might have a hard time contending with very strong voices about, oh, we've tried that before. Um, or they poo-poo your new idea because, you know, we don't have the money to spend on that. So the reason why outstanding marketing results begin with thought leadership in the boardroom is because you have to, before you're going to get a company or a group of people to change their course, which is what you need to do when it comes to marketing design, is you need to, um, you need to get them to think about where they're going and make a new make some new decisions. And so that can be very challenging to do when you just approach people as if it's always been that way. I think of it like this. Thought leadership is the building of an idea or a concept in such a way that you can contend with the status quo, right? The status mm-hmm. quo is the way things have always been. But without making them feel bad for believing that way or having that point of view. And that's challenging, because it's easy to just say, yes, you're outdated and you're irrelevant and you don't know what's going on, old person. <laughs> but that yeah. person is most likely the most senior or you know, has some stake in having things be the way that they've always been. So thought leadership, outstanding results in marketing start with thought leadership in the boardroom because you have to be able to market your thought and your idea in a way that sells it to people who have other agendas and other objectives. In place, and so that's that's why it's challenging to do marketing strategy for yourself because you have an established reputation within the firm, and it might not be for marketing. Yeah. Um, and you also are going up against a lot of political agendas that aren't always that easy to see inside. You know, you might you might look at them and think, oh, they're just uh, jerks, <laughs> and just <laughs> simplify it to that, which is just possible. It is that way, but usually people. Put up their put up resistance to something because they're not sure they don't see the big picture of what you're trying to illustrate or how it relates to them, and that's very much the marketing process. How do you get people to want to spend money on something? Usually, a lot of money on something that they know nothing about it was the same idea in the boardroom. How do you get a group of people, very smart people, to agree on a direction to take the firm and then to invest? money, oftentimes quite a bit of money, in that direction. So that requires a certain type of thought leadership. And how you sell and market those ideas has to be considered if you want to be effective at it. Yeah, I think what you're talking about is so important in the world we live in today because, uh, you know, we think that we can... Um, act in a certain way uh, in times where we don't really have to worry about people leaving. And those days right now are really changing and they're shifting. Companies, big, small, medium size, are finding that you know the behaviors that they or their uh, the people that they sort of you know put in charge managers supervisors you know those behaviors are not going to work moving forward how important is it for individuals inside and outside of the uh, company to understand how their leadership or lack thereof uh, has an effect on decisions other people make about them well, that's a challenging, challenging question. You know, I, I think that oftentimes when it comes to change, we, nobody likes change. It's kind yeah. of true. Even I'm, I, I'm working right now, uh, my passion project is in reducing my body fat. And I don't have to change some behaviors. And as much as I want to, I'm very excited and fired up about it. I'm reading books about it. It's still challenging. I'd rather just eat all of the crap that I like to eat. So I think if we can just come to a common understanding that change is challenging and that we want to inspire people to make a different choice. And in so doing, we have to make it easy for them to make decisions, number one. So mm-hmm. instead of it being because oftentimes conversations about marketing strategy and where we're going to go, they end up in paralysis by analysis. And I think that that's because maybe the people having the conversation, their core competency isn't marketing. So they can't contend with some of those silly, somewhat silly comments like, you know, we've done that before or, you know, okay, all right, great. You've done that before, but 
how did you how did you tweak what you did to see how you could improve your results for the next time? What were your results? How did you track your results? Like there's a whole mm-hmm. bunch of details in there. And I think that that sort of marketing leadership is going to start from encouraging people to have conversations about the future. And that's not the future is not about you. It's about who the company and the people who are running the company in the future and the employees and the customers that are going to be involved in that conversation. And if you really want to leave a legacy, which is what many people at the end of their career are looking to do, not just you have a bunch of results, but you also want to put the company in a better position. That's leadership, right? You want to put people in a better position because you Mm -hmm. were involved instead of taking from something and putting it in a place that's less. So I, I think that that's the conversation. And it's hard to not get into a conversation of you're wrong and you don't know what you're talking about. And and that's why many people say nothing. And they're sitting there waiting for these senior level leaders to retire before they make any changes with their marketing. And the problem with that is, you know, like I said, 50% of the new business for the last 10 years is coming online for the fastest growing firms. That's most likely just going to accelerate. So there's lots of opportunity to get in that, get in that game. And I'm not just talking about AdWords, you know, that's, that's, it's about how do you get your expertise out into the world and as many possibilities as you can so that it's effective for your brand. You know, the question is, if you're not working on that right now in five to 10 years, you haven't built anything online that you have, you, you, you don't have any, you don't have anything to stand on. Your brand's not embedded. So the question is, how long are you willing to wait? So I think yeah. that's the, those are the kinds of questions that people mm-hmm. need to ask and to do that without blaming and shaming, but instead mm-hmm. inspiring people to consider the impact they're making today. The other thing I, I I would love for you to chat about a little bit too is, you know, most of the time we think that we have all of the knowledge to make effective decisions. And, you know, what we find out is we think we do until we don't. So for example, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day who said, oh yeah, I was just working with this marketing company and now we have Google AdWords and we're paying for this and we're paying for that. And I turned to them and I said, okay, like, what are you selling? And their answer was, well, we haven't made my product packages yet. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. what did you say? You said like, oh, yeah, (laughs) right. Yeah. Like, oh, and I'm trying to say, just like you, I, I think I said, uh, like more like, uh, like that, Mm -hmm. because thousands of dollars can be spent. And if people, come to your website or find you somehow and they're trying to figure out how to even work with you because they found something they're like, they like, then that's a problem. Well, you know, I want to talk about this when we come back, you know, when we're looking at this, here I am, I've got the brand. I'm not necessarily shining the way I need to shine. So how do we, how do we now do this thing called alignment? How do we attract not just people, but the people we really want to show up, whether they're employees or clients? How do we do that? What are we sending out to the world? And why are we getting back what we don't want? Stay tuned. Jen Morgan's in the house. We'll be right back. Plus, live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. A word of caution, if you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. 
The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. In this day and age, if you don't reinvent yourself, you may never find balance, peace, and the sustainable life that is your birthright. Angela Watson Robertson, known as the Reinvention Warrior and the host of Breakthrough Radio Show Masters of Reinvention, is here to help you reinvent every area of your life. Tune in and hear from the best in the personal transformation business and discover tips and tools for positive change. Live every month on Transformation Talk Radio. TheAngelLady.net 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 1-800-323-1790 Sue Storm TheAngelLady.net Isn't it time to put your health first, to give yourself the gift of whole body wellness? What if embracing unconditional love and self-care was the first step to wellness? Could you honor that for yourself? My name is Audrey Michelle, host of Rewired Life Radio and the author of Rewired Life, A Journey to Untangle Chronic Pain and Endometriosis. In my book, I share how I healed from 17 years of chronic pain and disease. Get your signed copy at audreymichelle.com slash book, spelled M-I-C-H-E-L dot com slash book. Amber Teal, founder of The Healthy Edge, is bringing you the hit show, Healthy Edge Radio, living with power, passion, and purpose. Amber provides the support and tools necessary for you to finally release the weight and emotions that are hidden beneath the weight. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information on how you can take the next step with Amber, visit GetTheHealthyEdge.com. everybody. Super, super welcome back. Have you ever wondered why you're in the outside world and you're kind of thinking, you know, I'm doing all the right things. I'm listening to a lot of what Jen's saying. I listen to how to do the right things. But even when I think I'm doing the right things, I am getting what uh, you may say to yourself, the wrong results. Uh, You know, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Jen, first thing though, how can people, first of all, find out more about you and then how can they uh, work with you? What's the best way for them to contact you? Well, you can email me directly, j at jenmorgan.com. That's jen with two n's, morgan.com. And you can learn more about me and you can also contact me through the contact page, which will allow you to give me more information about you. And that's at jenmorgan.com, J-E-N-N-M-O-R-G-A-N.com. And that's for an individual who wants a consultant. And you can also check out the company website, radicallydistinct.com. Awesome. Um, you know, today we're kind of talking about and we're looking at, you know, for folks listening, marketing design. You know, what does that mean? Well, we have to navigate You have to navigate some water. Sometimes they're rough. Sometimes they're calm. Uh, But most of the time, when you try to do this yourself, that navigation takes way more time than any of us want it to take. So today, Jen is sharing her approach and what she does to go from the unknown to the known. And we've talked about, you know, what does strategy look like? You know, what does marketing design look like? And, you know, now we're kind of looking at this place of, well, wait a minute, brand design. Why is brand design so important? And does it have an effect on the people that we attract? Yes. So definitely the way that you put yourself out into the world is going to is going to have a, an effect on who attract who's attracted to you. You know, if you're trying mm-hmm. to get a very particular type of client, which most people who sell services, they want to work with people they like, 
number one, <laughs> and people that are long-term relationship clients. So even if they're maybe not your, going to be your best friend, they're people who respect you enough to stick around and let you continue to build a, um, a, rela- a business relationship with them. That way, the investment of time you put into them the, in the beginning, it pays off for you in, um, in, in terms of the results that the client gets, but also in terms of your ability to not have to continually get new clients in their space, right? Which gives you more time to build your brand. So definitely that's true. The way that you design your brand is going to Im- impact and in fact will be the result of who you attract. But I wanted to step back a second and um, I, yeah. we have a, a blog that just went up on radicallydistinct.com called Marketing Design. And so if you want a little bit more you know, like long form article on marketing design, that would be a good thing to read. And the, one of the things that I talk about in there is how marketing design has three aspects and we're, we're sort of dived right into them, but I forgot to tell yeah. you the three aspects. So the three aspects are marketing strategy, brand design and marketing management. And we have this fun way that we talk about it in the article, which is that you can think of those three aspects as your battle plan, your weapons, and your armor. So your strategy is your battle plan, right? Where are we going? (laughs) What, (laughs) What are the challenges that we are up against? And how are we going to create marketing programs that allow us to win market share, right? That's your battle plan. Yeah. And then brand design, which is where we are, ta- what we're talking about now. Those are that; those are your weapons. And I'm not going to lie. At first, when um, our social media director was talking about the word weapons, I was like, "Oh, this is so aggressive." But the truth <laughs> is, if you don't have a brand that looks the part, people don't notice you. You know, you you really do need to look the part before you get an opportunity to get the business. And so that's why we say leadership in the marketplace begins with image. So your image is a very important aspect of who, who is attracted to you and what people believe is possible. You know, if you don't look like just if you don't dress like an executive, people are just not going to give you the job. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that's that. But your brand is not just an image. It's also how the experience that people have, have of you once they start to work with you or they decide to come be an employee at your firm. So we have to do work to make sure that the brand that we have for our firm or for our individual businesses is packaged in such a way that not that we like it because we want to be proud of it when we show it to people. But more importantly, that it's attractive to the types of people that we want to come into our business, whether they be employees or they be customers. Well, you know, and the other part of this, too, is looking at, you know, to go back to what something you just said is creating a powerful image, mm-hmm. powerful image. But some some firms, some organizations, whether they're big or small or indifferent, they create a powerful image, but then they think I'm done. I'm like done. Mm-hmm. Right. We've right. done this. We've hired consultants. We've gotten it done. And there we are. We're done. And, uh, you know, that is um, a misconception that ties back in to the value or lack thereof value for people that are experts in marketing, whether it's an, in time, an internal, you know, marketing executive or somebody you hire from the outside. Don't you have to look at both, short, both short-term and long-term uh, impact of imaging? Yeah, and I think it's important to note that an image is what other people perceive about you mm-hmm. and not what you perceive about yourself. That's your identity. And the reason why I think that's important is that perception, it changes. So you have to be, it's just like working out. You can get in really great shape. And if you stop working out, you will get out of shape. <laughs> Same thing with your brand. You can create a very powerful image. But if you're not looking to the future and, you know, defining your brand around what's relevant to the people that you need in order to achieve that vision, then you are, what you're doing instead is you're just getting by and eating, you know, potato chips on the couch and watching the world go by and eventually you become irrelevant. So I feel that I, I, marketing, so I read, I read recently that the job of CMO, which is the marketing executive level position 
is mm-hmm. one of is the highest turnover of the entire C suite. Mm. So that's ins- insightful for a, a lot of reasons. One, you're not a marketing person, okay? So if you're not a marketing person and you're just constantly overwhelmed by the idea of marketing, you should just know <laughs> that the highest level marketers have a very hard time with their job. And there's a lot of reasons which we could go into, but maybe aren't as important. But yeah. they come down to this basic idea. As, as the marketing person, your job is to interpret the vision of the customer or the CEO into a marketing program that other people can take action on. It's not your job to figure out the vision. You might, you're going to help them get to the vision. You might be part of creating that vision. But in general, is to figure out what they have in mind that is driving the decisions that they're currently making. Because those are the things that you're going to have to contend with. And they might not be willing to talk to you about those things. And that's one of the biggest problems, right? You don't want to talk to you about certain things like that because it could be uncomfortable. It could be they have to change their behaviors. So in this conversation that I'm having right now about what's happening at the highest levels of leadership within marketing will happen at any company, whoever is handling the marketing And it will also help for any individual who is trying to be their own CEO and salesperson and marketing person, right? Where you have to understand the difference between the part of you that's the CEO that intuitively knows what it wants, but doesn't maybe have a vocabulary for that that makes sense to the rest of the world, right? And then that marketing side of you needs to become relevant to people who, you know, to first of all, to people who need to create your website for you. Okay, that's one thing (laughs) for people who want to be your customers, right? So a good marketing person is helping you become more relevant and relatable to people who you need in order to make your vision a reality. And that job at the highest level of leadership is challenging because it requires you to have the conversations that aren't easy to have to figure out if the chart that the that the quote unquote leader of the company, so let's say the CEO or it's the partner in a firm who is the most vocal about saying no to things. What is it that they're holding on to? How do you mm. find that out? And that takes, that's, that's not, um, there's no like mm-hmm. one, two, three, four, five <laughs> steps yeah. to creating yeah. that out. You have to be truly interested in that person and also able to pose other questions that get them thinking about themselves and their ideas in ways they haven't before. That's how you change people's thoughts. Mm -hmm. You change people's thoughts, then you have the opportunity to change people's actions. Yeah, you know, one of the things, too, that, um, you know, happens with management, and let's talk about this when we come back, is that you may be one of the best, most outstanding marketing individuals on the planet, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Now you are managing other marketing communications and even graphics organizations. Mm -hmm. Oopsie, what just happened there? Let's take a short break. (laughs) We'll be right back. Marketing management, the key to being known. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Jen Morgan. Awareness is universal. Establishing a living awareness through meditation brings peaceful, healthy, and creative well-being into your everyday life. The practice of living awareness, Spirit Fire's own meditation practice, is built on this belief and is designed for every level of practitioner. Each year, Spirit Fire hosts living awareness meditation retreats that allow you to explore the practice in depth at our retreat center in beautiful Western Massachusetts. Introduce yourself to meditation and the practice at the Foundations Retreat. Attend, in silence, a silent meditation retreat focused on mindfulness, presence, and nature. Or be engaged with the meditation sittings themselves at the Deepening Retreat. Start adding to your awareness and attend a meditation retreat designed to cultivate consciousness in your everyday life. For details on attending a Living Awareness Meditation Retreat, visit upcoming events at www.spiritfire.com. Tune into the wisdom of your soul for guidance on living a joyful life. On Soul Wisdom Radio, Wendy will provide inspiration to raise your vibration and connect with your higher self and guides. 
learn how to balance your ego and to progress spiritually on Soul Wisdom Radio with Wendy Rose Williams. Visit wendyrosewilliams.com or Transformation Talk Radio to learn more about a healing session with Wendy and her events and publications. Thrive is what we experience when our mind, body, and soul operate as one. When we thrive, we excel on all levels. Thrive is the mindset that matters. It is essential to our being. Have you ever found yourself looking for the instruction manual on how to thrive? You'll find everything you need to help you feel strong, powerful, and peaceful in your own body. So don't waste any more time. Visit thrivebygen.com today. Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the Rad Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com, that's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 9 Tune in to the hit show, Raging Skillet Radio, mouthing off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts and go to the raging skillet.com to find out more and let chef rossi know what's on your mind Hey, everybody. Super welcome back. Jen Morgan uh, is in the house. Jen, before we jump right into this, because this is really, you know, super important, too, for everyone to understand what part of what's going on is really each of us. Again, best place to find out more about you. Please let folks know. Best place to find about me is my website, jenmorgan.com. Jen with two N's, morgan.com. And to find out about how you can work with Radically Distinct for your professional service firm, go to radicallydistinct.com. Awesome. Um, look, you obviously, first of all, you, you're, you're very knowledgeable, but you're also mm-hmm. somebody that is, you know, knee deep with years of experience, both seeing what goes on on the inside as well as on the outside. So you represent sort of both sides of perspectives, which is super important. Now, marketing management, most people don't even know that's a thing. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's true. Um, And I think that's because at least when you're new to building an agency or a firm, uh, then like from the perspective of, okay, I'm going to have other people delivering services that's not just me, uh, the, the idea of managing marketing is really challenging because company might not have any sort of infrastructure at all. So all of a sudden you're like, well, am I going to be out, uh, you know, being the person passing out flyers for your company, right? So it's just it's the management. Man- managed marketing is really more of a sophisticated offering that is for growing firms that are fast growing and they can afford to hire out the marketing aspects. I think that when we're new to business and we start hiring out a little too soon, we're what we're really doing is avoiding marketing and sales and so that's why I think marketing management is not really well known as a thing. I hope to change that because I feel that there's a lot of companies that could really benefit from having at least part of their marketing managed so they can adapt. But I also think it's important that you think that you don't think that because you have marketing managed for you, that means that you no longer have to pay attention to marketing. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, we've gone through transitions as well where organizations don't even want to use the term marketing, kind Mm -hmm. of like they don't even want to use the term sales. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, now it has made a stunning resurrection Mm -hmm. because we know that marketing is important, especially with the way marketing is being done. And so let me ask you this. What have you found 
to be some of the most important things, you know, the keys, you know, the top keys to being not just known, but radically known. Well, what we like to say is that the key to being known is um, consistent presence. And consistent presence requires management, marketing management, whether that's you're managing your marketing for yourself, you're really taking a look at how am I consistently getting myself out there or how am I consistently getting my team out there? Is it aligned with the message that we have today and what our actual sales goals are or is it outdated and our sales team and our marketing teams aren't really working together? So that, that's the whole, the whole goal. The key to being known really is consistent presence and consistent presence is really all about marketing management. So how do you do that regularly in a way that is aligned with your sales goals? And in terms of, you know, I think the reason why people don't like marketing and sales, is my opinion, is they don't know how to do it well and don't realize that they're doing it every day. I think we've talked about this a lot in the Rad Method. Uh, the Rad Method shows that we did. Marketing and sales is a very primal part of being alive. You know, you have to market yourself to attract a mate, to attract friends, to get a job. And you have to sell in order to um, get anybody to buy anything from you, whether it's your ideas or it's products from you. And even if it's you're the leader of a company, you want to get people to work for you and contribute their best, you're selling them on some ideas. So marketing management, ideally, what it's doing is helping those pieces work together so that the value that you deliver to customers is recognized all the stages along the way so that the, it's not a confusion <laughs> about the value that you bring, but is instead that's what they're purchasing. They're purchasing the value of you. You as the person who's selling it becomes better when you have a managed, a managed program around you because you're more clear about what it is that you're trying to communicate yeah, and let's talk about this. We've got a couple of minutes left. What would you say to people that are wondering, how do I tap into my value, Jen? How do I how do I begin? Where do I start? What are some of the programs that you've put together to help people? Well, I I feel that the best thing the place to start is to ask yourself, actually get yourself a partner because you really need an outside perspective for this job of figuring out the value that you offer. You need an outside thought partner. And you want to have that, you want to have that person say this to you. You know, what, what do you do and what's the value of it? And then you're going to say about some stuff and it's going to be interesting stuff. And then the person that is your thought partner is going to say to you, and why does that matter? And they're just going to keep coming back at you with why does that matter? And you are going to have to answer that. Why does that matter? Okay, and you're going to keep coming back. And eventually you're going to get to a point where you actually say something that the person that you're speaking with can grab onto. You know, if you're the best lawyer in the world, well, that's great. You're the best lawyer in the world and that you've argued at all these different places and you have all these different awards and you've spoken here. But what, how does that relate to my business? How does that relate to my relationship that I'm solving right now? So that, those are the conversations you want to have. And the answer is, well, if you hire an attorney that's really good at what they do, then it's probably going to save you time, which hopefully saves you money, <laughs> right? And so right. those questions of, well, why does that matter? That's how you, how you get going. Um, we have for firms, for groups of people, professional service firms that are having a hard time aligning themselves around a strategy, we have a program called the Vision Finder Mastermind which its whole goal is to figure out where you want to take your firm, figure out all of the agendas that are conflicting, because that's the biggest problem, is there's so many conflicting agendas and nobody feels comfortable sharing that out loud, right? So yeah, yeah. we're going to we're create a space for you to be able to talk to me specifically about some of those things. And then we'll figure out how we're going to put that together and prioritize the firm's needs around the members, which is actually where the books of businesses grow. Um, that's the Vision Finder Mastermind. And then for really busy partners who it's hard to get out and market, we have a program called Self-Marketing Mastery where I help you with your personal brand and your pitch. And then we look at the marketing program that you're currently doing 
to see how, you know, is that the right things for you to be doing? Because right. we're not always sure those are the right things <laughs> for us to do. And, um, and then what we can do is we can build your social media and any other managed services around the partners instead of just the, you know, social media program that's for the firm. You know, we're going to start to look at how can we best get the expertise out of these members utilizing the tools that are available and integrating them with your other objectives that have to do also with, you know, attracting talent. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Wow. Jen, what a great show. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining us. Um, last thing, one more time, website information. You can find out more about me at jenmorgan.com. That's Jen with two N's, morgan.com. And you can email me directly at j at jenmorgan.com. And you can learn more about Radically Distinct and how we help professional service firms at radicallydistinct.com. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for helping all of us shine. We're going to take a short break, everyone. More coming right here on the show and Transformation Talk Radio. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for tuning in to Radically Distinct Radio. I don't want you to miss an episode, so subscribe to Radically Distinct Radio on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. And if you can, please rate and review the show on iTunes. Stay connected to me. Sign up for my newsletter on my website, jenmorgan.com. Follow at Radically Distinct on Instagram and Facebook. And tweet with me at, at Jen Morgan Brand. Until next time, I'm Jen Morgan, reminding you to be Radically Distinct. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.